but you need to be meeting together. You need to be meeting together. God gives, um, I'm, I'm trying to write this out, God gives much more encouragement to groups of his people than he does give to individual people. There's, there is encouragement to sustain you if, you if you're on your own in your community, your family, your parish, your area. There's lot, especially lots in the Psalms where people feel isolated. But even then, the isolation of the psalmist was usually to do with isolation as a people, being surrounded by foes as a nation. But there is so much solace to be had as a group, and particularly as a small group. And I think that's a real strength towards these churches that plant. They plant churches in new areas and new towns. And they've got 10,000 people have come to every Sunday to their mega church, which is in an abandoned uh, Walmart or something like that, or the local theatre that only holds 5,000 people, so they have to have two services on a Sunday. You know, and, and, they, and they will say, yeah, we started as a church of 11 people. We just started to meet and pray. God blesses us when we get together. Do not neglect meeting together, because we're two or three. Only two or three. Only one more than you on your own is what it takes to be church. Do not neglect meeting together because when two or three of you are gathered, I am there. God is with you when you're on your own, but he emphasises in this scripture that in a special way. He is there as well. And John 6, I'll be coming on to that in a, in a, in a way in a moment. Okay. So we've looked at the leadership, we've looked at the people, and this is specifically for us, church as mass, okay? And you might remember this from when we did it at um, the previous uh, you know, session. Um, a lot of people, particularly younger people, get out of church, particularly if you've um, been to fantastic mass and liturgy and worship at conferences and stuff like that. They get out of it because it's repetitive, because it's predictable, because it's boring. There's so many reasons why people choose to opt out, okay? And that's such danger. But then I, I used to use this. I'm not going to dwell on it too much today. Oh no, you've turned my music down. It's repetitive. It's predictable. But for some reason... Well, that's going to play out. So I realise I can't get past that. You have to listen to that whole of the channel. Okay, so it's repetitive, it's predictable, and it's boring. Yet somehow, when it, when we approach something like the Cha Cha Slide, there is my, um, during the summer term at school, I do, um, I say DJing very loosely. I set up speakers and play music on a Friday lunchtime when the weather's good. And the amount of requests that always comes in for the Cha Cha Slide. You know, and unlike any song of its generation, the people don't ask for other great hits of 2005. You know, but these guys are asking for the cha-cha slides five, seven years later, however long it is. Because it's accessible. You don't have to be a genius to access the cha-cha slide. You know, you can just watch the person in front of you and you can participate in it. That's such a strength of repetition. You can go to mass anywhere in the world. You might not understand the words, but if you have a grounding of it in your own language, you can pick out what's going on, and you can connect with it. Whether it's in Latin, French, German, or English, Newcastle, you can't understand the accent, if you're in Glasgow, to being down south, you, you can engage with it. You know why, when they're kneeling down, why you're kneeling down. If you know, you know hope, hopefully you do, and I really encourage you to get underneath this community. It's consistent. Predictability, actually it's, it's consistent. We know where it's going because it's consistent, it's re-emphasis. Like I said, in youth work, quite often we do new, 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 we bounce down. But what we need to get into the habit of is revisiting, revisit it again and again. You know, one, one of the problems of the Mass, which was, uh, I think, a brilliant strength of the new translation of the liturgy, is that we had to revisit what we were saying again. Because like me, me and so, and I guess lots of people had this, we, we, you become so automatic. You rattle it off, and like my, my daughter's four, and I think she's hopefully one of the best in her class, because she knows uh, the Our Father and the Hail Mary and the Guru be off by heart already. But already, she doesn't have to think about them and say them. She can just go, oh, okay, okay. And, and the words are out, bypassing the brain. They don't need to engage there anymore. They don't need to think about the words you're saying. The new translation of the, the Mass forced us to, to think about what we're saying, even if just to learn it. And I really want to encourage you, don't slip out of that into automatic again. 
so that we can pray those words. Repetitive nature makes it ex accessible. Its predictability makes it consistent wherever you go in the world. And it might be boring, because when something becomes so frequent and so repetitive, um, repetitive it can become boring. But actually, it's, it, it's, it's deep. Really, really deep. It's sort of like a, a hidden mystery. Um, I sort of relate this to when... Um, my wife used to do some tutoring, and while she was tutoring, um, I get Pippa, our oldest, um, and we'd go upstairs and we'd have cinema in her room, which was a laptop and the curtains drawn so it was dark, and we'd watch a DVD, right? And someone lent us Up, but some, no one warned me about Up, right? <laughs> and um, this, this was at a time when we hadn't had our second, and me, me and my wife were experiencing some fertility issues. Uh, so in the first 20 minutes of Up, um, I'm there in absolute tears, an absolute state. Thankfully, it's dark, so my my daughter can't see it. And I and, and I noticed that my um, my my daughter's not really engaged with the film at this point because it's boring to her. It was just these two people falling in love. There wasn't any colourful bird squirrel and all that sort of stuff going on. There wasn't, there wasn't, this, there wasn't the flying house. There wasn't the comic relief in Russell or anything like that. There was these two kids. That was quite interesting with the balloon at the beginning. But then it got a bit boring, which just showed them going on their life journey together. And then saw them getting married. And then saw them in the hospital waiting room being told that they would never have a child. Which is what I'm drawing out of this. And then she dies. And it's like... Oh, my heart is being ripped out. It's everything that we're going through at the moment of our infertility. And, and, my, and my daughter's bored. Because she couldn't access the depth of it. And that's a problem with some people, is that because it's not easily pal palatable, because it's not entertaining, because it's not um, flashy, and you know, because it is so deep, it's hard to package in a way that is going to be exciting and dynamic. So rather than, which tends to be the, 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 the a problem with a, a lot of people's youth ministry, is how do we change, make the deep fantastic and flashy and amazing and entertaining and engaging? That's, that's, that's the wrong way around to doing it. How can we make people able to access the depth of Holy Mass without compromising? You know, I, 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 I work in a school and, I'm all, and I feel like I'm under pressure a lot of the time to make sure that there's drama and really abstract things going on in the mass so we can engage everyone in the room. Or can we be better at teaching individuals to engage themselves in mass? And that's what I'd really like to put across some tools in this next little part.